So this is FRQ number six, uh, and if you if you happen to scroll down in the description, you'll find the link to all the Google um, documents that involve all these questions. The sixth one will be this one, um, and if you would like a complete collection of all the answers, I have it organized on my website on the Google site. Uh, so all of that's in the description. If you have questions, feel free to post them. Um, this is a thermal problem, and it's an essay-based question, and it's dealing with hydrogen molecules splitting into hydrogen atoms. Okay, now, of course, hydrogen is diatomic, so in nature we would expect it to be diatomic. This is an extreme circumstance where we're splitting it apart. And we're going to go through the thermodynamics of that. Okay? The first question says, is this process endothermic or exothermic? Okay? And before we talk about that, bonding is very tricky and most people don't really understand it. And so, so when you start writing this, don't come in with a full set of confidence. What most people think is that most people think of a bond as that little you know, wooden stick that you would use in a, in a Lewis structures kit or a model kit, or, or something that's an actual thing. So they think when you make a bond, it must require energy to make something. But really, bonding is more of an interaction. It's not an actual thing. There's nothing there in between the molecules holding them together. There's no chain or rope or anything along those lines. It's an electrical force between them. So a magnet force is similar to that idea. So when I hold this magnet here by the wall, and I let go, that magnet being very strong is going to attract towards the board, and the board will attract towards that. And, and what will happen is it will start with a certain amount of energy of potential by being close to it. And, and as I let it go, it's going to convert that into kinetic and move faster towards it. But you'll notice that when I'm done, this is now stopped. So what that means is, is there was an energy with it that's no longer there. And it's been given off to something else. This is bond making. This is the two things forming that interaction between them. And it involves a, a release of energy to everything else besides the chemical every time you do it. Every bond being made releases energy in its exothermic process. The opposite process is making, or is breaking that bond. And breaking the bond requires me to put in energy into the chemical process of making, breaking that bond. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm breaking apart a bond. I'm going to be putting in energy to do that. So in order to break this apart, I'm going to have to pull on these somehow. Whether it's through speeding them up to the point where they can be pulled apart, through a collision, or something along those lines. But that's going to be an endothermic process. Okay? And delta H will therefore be positive. And that's for the chemical. So then the question goes on and says, well explain why. Explain why that's endothermic. Okay? And really this could be very simple. You could, you could simply just say that you're breaking bonds. You want, to, you want to identify that you understand what's happening in this reaction. That you start with a bond between the hydrogens, you end without it, and therefore the, that you're having a bond breaking. Now having read through some of these answers, a lot of people will say things like the bond breaking is larger than the bond making. And there is no bond making in this. If we go back to reaction energy diagrams, you're stopping there. Okay? You're not going to continue on to the point where you figure out whether it's endothermic or exothermic. You're just doing that first half. You're just breaking the bond. So the enthalpy of your chemicals is increasing. Okay? You're putting an energy into it. So you want to say something about the bond breaking. You don't want to say anything about bond making or a full chemical reaction in this place. You want to kind of shut it off there, and the bond breaking will be endothermic. Okay, because it's going to need energy put in to get that process to happen. Okay. So moving on from there, part C says what happens to the entropy as this reaction goes. So for entropy, you really want to start by looking at how many gas molecules you have. You have one here made out of two atoms, and two here made out of one atom each. The total number of gas molecules goes up. So delta S for this is going to be positive. Right. So that's the number one thing you want to look at. In this case, we're done with that. Delta S is going to go up. So now we have delta H and delta S. So the next question is going to then ask about delta G. Is this thing going to be spontaneous? So when you're asked about that, you should write out the equation. And this is an essay question, so no calculation. So I just want to go through and analyze this based on positives and negatives. My delta H is positive. Delta S is positive. So the question is, what will my delta G be? So in this case, I have delta H, which will make delta G be positive, and then I'm subtracting a positive delta S that will make delta G be negative. So it could be either. It depends on the actual amounts. So when that happens, it's going to depend on the temperature. There's going to be a cutoff point where above a certain temperature this will be spontaneous, and below a certain temperature it will not be spontaneous. So for this, I would say that my final answer would be that this will be spontaneous at high temperature only. Okay. As this gets bigger, and it's multiplied by this, as long as the delta S and delta H are relatively constant, eventually this is going to become larger than this. Positive minus a larger positive gives me a negative answer. If the temperature is low, 
and I have a positive minus a smaller positive, positive answer. So at that temperature, we would achieve an equilibrium. So that would be, you know, when you have hydrogen and hydrogen atoms turning back and forth into each other um, at a relatively consistent rate. All right, so then we move on to part E. Part E is kind of the trap question on this. Um, so I know for me, I was looking for something in particular. Uh, I was asking about hydrogen and oxygen gas being sparked. And basically, when you burn something, you have to do something to initiate the reaction. So why? What does that do? Okay. So if we look at this reaction energy diagram, my chemicals start off with a certain amount of energy and end with less, which means they're giving off energy to something else. Okay. An exothermic process is what we call it. But what's also important is what happens in the middle. And really, when we get into kinetics, that part's going to become even more important. So this deals with that. So, so if we look at this reaction, this is probably going to be a situation where these things, well, this one, the entropy goes down. But a lot of your combustion reactions will happen spontaneously, even though they don't actually happen at room temperature. The reason is, is because to break the bonds, you don't have enough energy to get that to happen a lot at the beginning. So what the spark does is it does two things. One is it gets you over that starting point where you've broken the bonds. Now, a fancy name for that is activation energy. So the second thing, besides the activation energy, is the idea that this is now going to loop. Okay, so once you go through and you break some bonds, you get to this point. That's what you're sparked in. Then you're going to go back and you're going to reform new bonds. That's going to release energy. So as these things are forming new bonds, they're coming in towards each other and they're speeding up. So you end up with molecules moving around much faster than before. That's your energy, so to speak. And what that allows you to do then is those molecules can fly off at a fast speed and go hit another set of molecules and then break those bonds and initiate that reaction. So this kind of feeds back upon itself. Because you're releasing more energy than you put in, every time this reaction occurs, you're able to start another reaction. So once you spark a lighter, you don't need to sit there and keep sparking it to get the reaction to keep going. It'll go on its own. It'll, it'll fuel itself. And I think that idea of why a fire burns once you started it is a pretty nice uh, correlation with reaction energy diagrams. The idea that you're once you've started this and you're falling back down to here, that can then be used on the next set of molecules to, to break those bonds. So the idea of the loop is, is the key idea, I think, behind that. So if you would check below, you'll find all the FRQs. If you have questions, feel free to post them. Suggestions, requests.